Hey everyone, it is Vian from Mountain Road Ride here and today I want to walk you through Strava's latest update with regard to the Root Builder tool. I want to walk you through the web version of this tool and there's already quite a few resources out there that relate to the mobile version and the updates that they've made to the map software on the app but today we are going to stick with the web portal version of this Root Builder tool. I'm going to show you how to first of all just create a very basic route so if you're completely new to building routes on Strava you'll find that very informative but from there on out I'm also going to go into a few additional steps maybe a few advanced workflows that can help the more experienced Strava route builders out there. That will include things like popularity maps, we'll look at the new additions to this routing tool including the elevation and the surface type preferences that you can set. Um, from there I'll also walk you through how to edit an existing route, we'll look at manual mode, we'll look at the global heat map settings and how to best inspect those and then also I'll finish it off with a top tip um, that relate to how you can uh, create a couple of variations on a route if you don't want to redo a lot of the route planning that you've already done. So with that, let's get straight into it and uh, start things off with a very basic introduction on how to set up your first route on Strava Route Builder Tool. Alright, so let's kick things off with a very simple illustration of how this tool can be used to build out your perfect route. Now, um, as you can see, I'm on the route builder right now, and one of the first few options that you're gonna have to choose between is either whether it's a run route or a ride route that you wanna set. Now, we're gonna stick with ride for now, and then also hide those preferences for the moment so we can really just focus in on uh, how to build a route in a very, very basic view. So I'm going to start here in Leesburg in Virginia, USA as an example and I know that there's a very nice bike path that runs all along the town right through it um, called the Washington and Old Dominion or the W no D as it's known locally. So we are just going to start with a starting point. I'm going to go right here from a local bike store that I usually park at um, right there and then it's just a case of actually adding a few waypoints. So it's clicking along the route and you can see it immediately connects the dots and as I go along you can see that it connects all the dots all around and you ultimately end up wherever you want to end with your run or ride and you've just created your first route as simple as that so nothing complicated to the simple point and click and adding a few waypoints to create a very basic route now we want to get a little bit more customized with this particular route so if we now want to go into setting a few of the other preferences i'm going to go back into that menu bar up there and you're going to see now i have a few additional options that has become available with the recent update of the strava roots builder first of all i want to look at this one this one actually wasn't a new update um, it's been available in the previous route builder and it's something that's very useful because currently this is set to follow the most direct route so what will happen is as I'm clicking along and I'm adding a few waypoints it will just get the straightest shot that it can to connect up those dots another option as on the screen is this uh, follow the most popular route so by clicking on that you can see that something changed ever so slightly over on this section of the map. Now if I zoom in, you'll see that what it actually did was instead of just going straight along this route, it's now following a more popular route. So it's actually taking me on this sidewalk along this road and then getting me back onto the road. So that is one option that I don't always switch on due to this exact occurrence that you see right now. Um, I mostly like to stick to follow the direct route. It just gives me a bit more of control over how I can uh, dictate where the route flows. Now, I just mentioned that uh, you have this ability to follow other people's or the most popular routes in a particular area. Now, where does this information come from? Well. Um, since Strava um, is a collection of all the activities 
ever logged onto their platform, they can draw from that massive database of people having traveled through a particular area. And this is where, for me, the biggest, biggest draw um, of this particular service comes in is when you look at the global heat map. So I'm going to switch that on. And what you'll see is this overlay onto the map where you can now see where all the other people have previously trained in this particular area and so when I zoom out you can really get a sense of like okay there's that bike path that everybody cycles on and that clearly gets the most attention and then some of the other surrounding routes and the popularity of that now Obviously, with this, what happened is it will deem the sidewalk where people run or maybe some of the, the commuters ride on as a more popular route than the actual road. And so that is why in this most popular feature, it actually just pinned me to the sidewalk. So next up, I just want to briefly mention two of the latest features that got added as part of Strava's updates to the route builder, and that is this ability to now specify an elevation and also a surface type that you prefer. So I've gone ahead, just added quick three waypoints, one out to Percival, one down here to a town called Middleburg, and uh, I wanna now play around with these two settings. Now I know that this particular area right here is just filled with really neat gravel roads, so let's force this builder into considering some of those roads, and this is where the surface type comes in. If I now go ahead and tell it to prefer dirt roads, that's exactly what it's gonna do. It's gonna pick up all these very neat gravel roads and you can see that by the differences in the line color so solid line represents your paved road there's an unknown surface or unspecified and then the dotted line those are your dirt surfaces as you can see down in the legend right over there so same goes, we can also force it back onto the paved surfaces. Next up, we're gonna look at this elevation preference that you can set. Now, for this to work just a little bit more fluidly, I'm gonna actually go away from the most popular route and I'm gonna say just follow the direct route. So this gives the route builder just a little bit more room to run. And you can immediately see it changed up as I did that. But now let's start uh, playing around with the elevation gain as well. So if I'm gonna maximize the elevation gain, it has now gone ahead and selected the route that will give you the greatest elevation gain. Similarly, I can go ahead and select it to a minimum and you can see that it's now dropped by almost 100 meters in elevation gain and followed a completely different route. Interesting enough, the surface types um, definitely play a role there. You can see when I've got it to a maximum, quite a bit more dirt road showing those hilly gravel sections and then minimizing it will take you along a paved road, just the, the nature of the paved road a little flatter in this instance. So there you have it. Those are two of the new additions, the surface and the elevation preference that you can adjust with the new route builder. For our next example, we're going to look at how to modify or edit um, a route that you might already have in your collection. Either you downloaded this route or you created it yourself or you just simply copied it from somebody else. Um, I'm going to use this example that I have here of a route that just starts at one particular point and then leads out um, just a one directional route um, to see if we can maybe polish this off or change and alter it as we go along. So the option that we're looking for here is in fact the edit button so we're going to head into edit and that will then put us into the root builder tool and we can now start making adjustments now this is where i want to give you a couple of pointers and tips on how to deal with editing an existing route it's sometimes not the easiest thing in the world and there are a couple of nuances that come into play with the root builder when you get to this edit mode. Now, first of all, you can obviously tell that I've added in a couple of waypoints on the way out on this particular route. So, um, the way we can change up this route is by adding additional waypoints. Now, this is one of my first tips that I want to show you. Um, let's say I wanted to add a waypoint right here in the middle of my course. Now, note, obviously, right now my end point or the finish line is set way over here. And if I now just go ahead and say, all right, well, I want a waypoint in the middle of my course by 
clicking, just directly clicking, it has now shifted my endpoint all the way over here. And that's not what I wanted. It's now just gone from my original endpoint and just hooked it up right there. Not what we wanted at all. So we are now going to just undo that particular instance. I'm going to show you how you can add a waypoint now to this particular map. And the way you do that is by clicking and holding and then just kind of moving it a little bit. And now it has done exactly what I wanted it to do, which was add a waypoint and not just simply move the endpoint over to this particular part of the map. And with that now, it becomes a simple case of then dragging it to where I want it. So let's say over there. And then I can also move this waypoint maybe over there. And so now it gives me the ability to start altering my map. So again, I can click maybe somewhere on that route, drop it in there. I've added another waypoint and I could, you know, swing up there if I wanted to go around that traffic circle. And that is now how we can start manipulating the map without adjusting the end or the starting point in this particular case. You can also very easily delete some of those waypoints. So let's say you did want to get rid of this waypoint over here, right clicking on that and deleting the waypoint gets rid of that altogether. So there are three ways for you to now start manipulating an existing map and and that is by either adding, clicking and holding, dropping down a, whole, uh, a waypoint and deleting a waypoint and then also clicking and moving a waypoint. Then as part of that edit mode, you can now also um, not only adjust the waypoints within your route, but you can obviously adjust the endpoints or the end waypoints essentially of your route as well. So if I wanted to move my finish say over here, rather than where it was, um, it gives me that ability to do so. Now, let's say I also wanted to really alter the map and you know, let's cut through there. So basically trying to cut out this whole area of an existing route. So I would need obviously a waypoint right there. And let's say we add a waypoint over here. And now if I start deleting the intermediary waypoints, it's gonna hook that up much better. So thereby, cutting out this additional loop that I've had by adding in a waypoint and a new one over there. And now I've got the ability to create a, a completely new section of my map that wasn't there to begin with. Good, so for our next example, we are gonna look at the manual mode that you find with this Strava Root Builder. And I think this is a particularly useful setting that you don't find in a lot of the other competitors on the market um, that allow you to build routes. Now, I am busy building out an epic gravel loop that you can see that starts from Niesberg and you can see, judging by all the dotted lines, um, that there are quite a few dirt roads that I can follow all the way along back over here. So now my final step is to try and hook up um, with my starting point by crossing over the river. From experience, I know that there is a ferry that runs over the river right here and uh, a cyclist can easily just pull up, pay the fee and then cross over. And then should you want to confirm that hunch that there is a way for you to cross over the river um, and you want to make sure that others have done so in the past, you can obviously just switch on the global heat map and that is going to confirm for us that there is indeed a way to cross over this river um, even when there is no road. So note now how even when I take my last waypoint all the way to the edge where that ferry dock starts, um, I cannot just easily click over the river. Strava cannot compute that because there is no route that follows over that particular surface. So note what happens if I now zoom out just a little bit and I click my next waypoint um, on the other side of the river, it has now just gone ahead, taken me back along to where there was a last known bridge, and then it'll take you all the way down to that particular point on your map. So now this is useless for somebody trying to plot out the exact route that they're gonna follow on that specific day. So using the undo button, we're gonna go away from that view, and we are gonna make use of the manual mode. So I'll switch that on, you'll get the warning, and then you can just click your next waypoint manually on the other side of the river. Um, and then from there on, I would like to switch off the manual mode yet again, and I can go ahead and complete my route by plotting down the last few waypoints that I need 
to finish up that particular loop. So that is one way in which the manual mode can definitely help you to cross over or through areas that you know is accessible, um, but uh, Strava cannot calculate that in their particular route building. I want to go back to that uh, global heat map settings that we looked at earlier just to show you that there are actually a few other ways that you can also look at the map when dealing with the global heat map. So here we had the standard view where we got that uh, map overlay with the most popular routes in a particular area lighting up. There's also another option for you to switch over to a dark mode setting. Now this I think um, really helps to um, highlight those areas where other riders or runners um, have performed activities in the past. So you can really see by this now that uh, bike path that runs through this area of Leesburg really light up um, and that intensity of that line just really shows you the popularity of that particular route. Um, there's also another option for you to go into light mode. This one changes up the map into a red and gray color. And um, what I want to highlight on this particular map is I'm actually going to zoom into this area around here. And this is to show you that um, whenever you're dealing with the uh, heat map, the activity type definitely affects that setting as well. So right now I've got it in ride mode and this dry mill road here highlights up very well. When I switch over to a run mode, you can now see that no longer do runners really prefer that but you can see the addition there of the running track highlighting up um, that you won't find when you are in the ride mode so just bear that in mind when looking at the global heat map setting then the last view that you can also pull up this is a satellite view I like this one just to kind of confirm my hunch about a certain area so maybe if you are uh, looking for a route and you're not quite sure if it actually hooks up or not um, then the satellite view can be very helpful I'm gonna just uh, un um, select the highlights right there and now you can see if I was to travel along this trail right there and I had the feeling like maybe I can go through that particular section right there yep satellite view can help confirm that there is indeed a way for you to cross over from that one road to the other if you were unsure And so next up I want to show you a top tip when it comes to designing maybe two variations of a route that you have in mind. So let's say we're going to go back to that gravel loop that I was planning out in my earlier step and instead now I am going to build two different route variations for this particular map. Now I've come to a crossing point here where I can decide to either go down and follow the routes back to my original starting point or as earlier I can go along the river um, all along that dirt trail and then cross over the river via the ferry. Now, what I like to do at this particular instance when I get to a point like this where I have to make a decision about two different possibilities for a route that I've got in mind I actually just go ahead and save it. So what I'll do is I'll save this and say this is the um, version one of my route. Saving that to my roots, now I can go back to my overall view and I can have a look at my collection of roots that I've got. Now what I like to do in this instance is then actually open this version and duplicate it. So I've got the same map that I can work from um, as a starting point there to continue along. So what I can now do is I'm going to keep the global heat map on and in this instance I'm actually going to follow this road all the way down here, a nice little gravel trail that leads down there. I'll go along this uh, loyalty road and I'll eventually snake up back to the starting point and that is going to take me right back down to my original start off point. So that's one way and I can then obviously save this version and I still have that other copy available to then build the alternative version. So neat way for you to build two routes without having to redo everything that you already did, especially when you get to an intersection where you can decide about two different directions. 
Good, so there you have it. That's the walkthrough of Strava's new Root Builder tool on the web portal. I hope you found this helpful and that you're equipped with a couple of new skills on how to best plan out your next running and riding adventure. If you did find this video helpful, please be sure to like it and do subscribe to our channel. There will be plenty more running and riding related content coming in the future. Until then, I'm Vian from Mountain Road Ride. See you next time.